Hey, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody is doing fine. Today's video is another random video. I don't know when I'm actually going to get outside the house and do stuff because there have been two people that came back to the Philippines from the United States that did not do the quarantine and now the numbers of infected have been reaching like 23,000 to 30, 30 some odd thousand people a day in Philippines and the national capital region is high alert again. So like our son not being vaccinated and now five year, five year olds to 11 year olds are able to get vaccinated. So now we got to get him vaccinated in order for us to go out. But any, anyhow, I'm going to get into this video. So I've been thinking about this one because I plan on visiting family, hopefully later this year in the States. And, and that's kind of, you know, I've been kind of thinking about that about me visiting later this year, if things go right. So today's video is about ticks and diseases that they carry and how to prevent getting any of the diseases and how to take care of your fur babies. And at the end of the video, I will share a personal experience that I had before coming to the Philippines. And if you stick around and if you're somebody that's in the medical field, you know, you don't work with the, with this, uh, healthcare system that I'm going to mention in the video. I'm not going to mention it by name, but if you are in the healthcare field, you're going to be like, "Whoa, wait, that's not right." But if you're in the work in that facility, then you're going to be like, "Oh, that, that's our standard standard procedures." And I'll go further in the detail on calls that I made, that that I made and received from the Veterans Affairs back in the states when this happened. But without any further ado. We're going to get into it. So I got to move this over here. So there's 25 plants that repel ticks effectively, but on this page, I will add this in the, in the description, but this is some of the diseases that you can get from ticks, African tick bite fever, and that, not plus some most whatever bourbon virus, Colorado tick fever, up oh, okay, never mind. Uh, Crimean Congo hemor hemorrhagic fever, Heartland virus, Lyme's disease, fever, Queensland tick, typhus, uh, typhus, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, tick-borne, whatever that word is, until it, whatever that word is. So okay. So, so here is a plant thing of plants that repel ticks that work. Rosemary, beautyberry, fleabane daisy, garlic, marigolds, rue, rose, geranium, uh, whatever that is, pinroyal, wormwood, catnip, lavender, lemon balm, holy basil, roses, sage, mint, pansies, hostess, eucalyptus, geranium, caramelia, whatever that is, thyme, sunflowers, and venus flytraps. And you go down and it will tell, it'll tell like the rosemary, it will tell you, it tells you how it works and pictures of it. But with the other ones, I will delete them because the last time that I tried doing multiple multiple tabs when I went through, and then I had to make a secondary video because I did forget a tab. Okay, so uh, so in the case that I had, I had a whole entire tick. I, I gotta move my camera down, but I had a tick like embedded like right here like where I could actually feel it down in the tissue and the muscle. It was deeply embedded in into my body. I went to the doctors and the, the doctor, 
is like really well known for being a terrible doctor. Like anybody that's ever had her said that she is just a, well, they said a lot of bad things about her because she was just terrible. But she said, she said, our, our policy is that we have to leave it in and the tick will back out. Ticks do not back out. They'll, they'll embed and they'll die inside of you. So leaving a tick's head embedded in your or your furry friend's skin doesn't increase your risk of tick-borne disease. However, a tick's head left embedded in your skin can increase the risk of infection. The tick's head and mouth parts are covered in germs that, that you don't want to leave in your skin. So that right there, the, the facility, the clinic that I went to, the whole entire tick was inside of me. I could not get it out with tweezers. I could not get it out with a needle. It was deeply embedded. So this right here, if I would have left it in there, I could have been really sick. And luckily, I'll explain the story more on that here in a bit. So besides looking awful, ticks can cause reactions to the skin that leads to a small abscess. Like this right here. It'll leave this nat dark dark area than, than the rings around it. This is what a typical tick bite looks like. I've had it I've had it two different times and I've had this both times even when that tick was deeply embedded in into my body. So now I'll go back to this. So okay, so now I'll go back to this one. At least a small access, especially if not removed properly in young animals and heavily infestation could lead to anemia anemia whatever so <clears throat> okay and the cdc calls rmsf the most deadly tick-borne disease in the world if not treated properly death can occur within eight days of the onset of symptoms even in previously healthy people this is partially because untreated RMSF can cause damage to blood vessels and leads, that leads to organs and tissue damage. So, like I was saying, I had that tick deeply embedded. The doctor said, we're going to leave it in. It'll back out. It won't, you know, ticks won't back out. I went to the, went to the emergency room in the main hospital just about a half an hour north. The ER said the same thing and I was ticked off needless to say so <clears throat> so uh, the typical symptoms of Lyme's disease include fever headache fatigue and characters characteristic rash called arrhythmia migraines if left untreated, infection can spread to joints, the heart, and nervous system. Lyme disease is, is diagnosed based on symptoms, physical findings, e.g. E rash, and possibly exposure to infected ticks. You know, I, I know somebody that when I was doing physical therapy, somebody said that they had it in their younger years and they have to take medication for life because of how bad bad it was so if it goes untreated you can die from this you know people do not understand how bad and how serious this is you know and you know i know some of you there people that are watching back in the states that they're like you guys are probably thinking why are you talking about ticks it is freezing cold our nipples are hard, we're cutting glass, you know, we want summer back, well, you know, summer, you got the mosquitoes, you got ticks, you know, hey, you know, this is why I'm talking about it, even here in the Philippines, there are ticks here, you know, I want to do this to be informative. So, okay, uh, here, okay, so this is what a tick's nest looks like, I've seen them bigger, and there's probably going to be about a thousand in in this nest right here, and I've heard people say, "Pour gas on them and start them on fire." You know, and 
like where I lived in Wisconsin after I got out of the military, yeah, there's the Kimberly Clark Wildlife Area, also known as the Million Acre Swamp, and it's easily to get lost in it. And the University of Madison, the University of Wisconsin Madison, did a study there, and they were surprised by the number of ticks. And where in the and the Kimberly Clark Wildlife Area is in Price County, Wisconsin, in North Central Wisconsin. There are no possums in North Central Wisconsin. Well, in that part, any, anyways. And the, the Department of Natural Resources, they are more worried about reintroducing wolves and mountain lions, you know, and, and they say all the mountain lions are male, but eh, they have male, or they have babies, but apparently they're transgender mountain lions with ovaries out there just popping them out left and right that you know and you know and they throw rattlesnakes in there don't notify the hospitals they don't notify the public but you go to Jackson County to the Black River Black River Falls wildlife area and there's a caution that sign that says caution timber rattlers in that area so everywhere where typically where timber rattlers are they have signs but you know an hour south of Phillips, you know, they don't have the signs, and somebody almost died, you know, in the hospital. I had to tell the DNR, hey, you need to tell us. But, you know, they need to release possums, and possums actually eat ticks, you know, and they need more wildlife to get the ticks under control in that area because it is a very common issue in that area where people are going in for tick bites, you know, getting Lyme's disease and Rocky Mountain, whatever, you know. But, okay, so with the with the story of that, so I went in to, to this clinic and I said, hey, I got a tick deep embedded. I can feel it moving around in, in my pectoral, in the upper part of my pectoral muscle. You know, I try getting it out with tweezers. I try getting it out with a needle. I cannot get it out. It's deeply embedded. And the doctor, which is a POS that nobody likes, she said, oh, we're going to leave it in there and it'll back out. So a couple of days go by and I go to, and I went into the emergency room about a half an hour north. And I said, hey, I got a tick deeply embedded. The one clinic in Phillips said, the, the doctor said, no, we're going to leave it in because it'll, it'll back out. And the, the ER doctor said the same thing. So I, you know, I don't get any medications to prevent Lyme's disease, nothing like that. You know, I walk out, I'm ticked off, you know, so I call, so I call the Veterans Affairs and I call, and I call the, call the CBOC that I went to. And I'm like, hey, is Dr. So-and-so available? I got an issue and I, you know, I need some guidance on this. And the receptionist said, what, what, okay, she's busy with the patient right now. Can I take a message of what's going on? You know, so that, you know, if it's, if it's something urgent, I'll have her call you, call you back immediately after, <clears throat> after she's done with her, with her patient. And I said, I said, yeah. So I went into this one clinic in Phillips, and there's two clinics. So the one clinic, I, I said, I got a tick deeply embedded, the head, and, head, the body, everything. I can feel it tickling in my pectoral muscle, everything. I can't get it out with tweezers. I can't get it out with a needle. You know, the clinic said that they were going to leave it in there, and the tick would back out. And I just left the emergency room, and they said the same exact thing. And the the receptionist receptionist you know very very nice you know the receptionist in the VA they're they're really nice people you know the the one that the CBOC that I that I called you know she goes what the f is going on that that's the stupidest crap ever you know and there was another receptionist in the background who said what's going on and and she goes she goes I'm gonna put you on speaker phone now and to repeat what you just said. So I repeated it, and she's and the other lady was like, "What the, what the hell's going on? You know, this ain't right, you know." And they're like, "Hey, 
let it, we'll get w- with an available doctor and we'll give you a call back. You know, and they're, they're like, hey, what's your number? I give her, gave the receptionist my number and she called me back like about three minutes later and she said, uh, t- get cotton balls and hydrogen peroxide. Dose the cotton ball and hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide, put it over where the tick is, leave it there for a little bit, you know, leave it there for about five minutes and the tick will back out. And I'm like, okay. So I stopped at Hometown Shopco, got some cotton balls, got some hydrogen peroxide, got some athletic tape. I said, screw it. You know, I'll just put it on there. You know, because I'm you know, driving back. I'm not going to sit there and have, have my hand like this with a cotton ball and all that. So I so I get home. I, I had a voicemail from the Minneapolis VA coming from the main hospital. Listen to the voicemail, and it was some. It was a lady that helped veterans get outside care if you live more than forty miles away from a Seabock or the main hospital. And at the time, I lived more than forty miles away from a Seabock. And she, she goes, "Hey, I heard what happened. You know, do you want a? Would you like me to put in your transfer transfer you over to this other clinic?" I heard what happened, it's a bunch of crap. I got a call from your primary care provider. She was aware of what happened. You know, that that is totally unacceptable. So I called her back and I said, yeah, transfer me to the other, the, you know, I go get me approved for the seller clinic. She called me back about 20 minutes later. Hey, I got you approved. I got you an appointment set up. And, you know, be there be there tomorrow at, at the, this given time. Because I told them what happened. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I go in. So I go in. And the, the nurse at this new clinic said, what, what's going on? And I, and I told her the story about what happened at this clinic in the ER. And she's like, that is a bunch of bull crap. Because that is, you know, that you know that, that's endangering a patient. You know, you do that, you know, you can get sick and die. You know, that, that is unacceptable. You know, and and she went out and told a couple of other nurses. That these couple of other nurses didn't believe it. They came in and asked me. I repeated my story. You know, then the doctor finally comes in. I tell the doctor what happened. The doctor was ticked off. By the time that I get done with my appointment, these nurses all um, were texting their friends that worked in other healthcare systems, but and not the one that. Told me to leave the t- they were going to leave the tick in and it would come out, but they all said that was not SOP of their hospitals and that and that would be a lawsuit against the hospital. So I get out, so I leave the clinic, and and I go home. I get home, I have had a phone call from a patient advocate that heard about it, wanted my story. My my case manager heard about it, wanted my story. And like a couple of days go by, I actually had a VA lawyer contact me saying that I could that I could sue sue that clinic and the healthcare system, but it would take about you know, and they said it would take about three months. But I already had my tickets to come to the Philippines. So if I would, wouldn't have come to the Philippines when I did, you know, I could actually nail that like healthcare system with a lawsuit. And because the VA lawyer said that was like a some kind of like healthcare violation, and the whoever put that policy in could have lost their could have lost their status to ever work in a hospital again, and that doctor could have lost could have lost her medical license it, and would have been fired. But that's what happened to me. But, okay, so I got a couple of other things here. Okay, so Tix hate scent of lavender. Use lavender soaps, detergents, dryer sheets, shampoo, etc. Put dryer sheet in your kid, kids' pockets. And I've heard that you can even tie them around your shoelaces, you know, and tuck them in the inside of your shoes while you're wearing them so that that scent gets out and the ticks won't 
get on you. But I I can yeah I uh, okay so okay just remember this because I'm not gonna add this in the description if this is something if you're having issues with ticks. So then there is also this repel tech defense aerosol spray and it lasts up to 10 hours and it works for mosquitoes and it works for ticks. You can spray it on your clothes, you can spray it on your skin. There's another brand of the same stuff that you spray on your clothes and you have to put it, you cannot put it on your skin, but you'd have to take it outside, let it air out for a while, then put them on and it would be good. Good in your clothes for like, I think, I think it was like 10 washes, something like that. So it lasted lasted in your clothes for a while. But Repel Tech Tick Defense is a really good thing. And you can get it on Amazon and it's $4.97 for a six ounce bottle, spray bottle. Or you can get a six pack, a six pack of six ounce bottles for $39. I have not seen this here in the Philippines at all because I've only heard that ticks are only attracted to animals, but ticks are actually drawn to people with O positive blood, like with, with type O blood. And I'm O positive, that's why they, apparently why they're so attracted to me. But here's the aerosol can that I just showed. but. There's no price on it, so I think they're out of stock right now. But this stuff, you know, you know, if, if they touch your clothes and, and you have it sprayed on your clothes, or on your skin, or whatever, do not get in your eyes and mouth, obviously. But it, but it'll get on the ticks and it'll and it'll kill them. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get rid of that. So ten ways. So ten ways to keep your dogs safe from fleas and ticks. Ticks, you know, is a really big thing. I'll add this because it does have the video in here and where to look for, for ticks on dogs. Uh, uh, best managed with like veterinary approved flea and tick products available on the market. I honestly can tell you I've had dogs and the flea tick collars that they give are, are absolute ass because a dog will scratch to get it off and you know a, a dog will get it off it quicker than quicker than you can put it on and it will destroy the destroy the, destroy it bad uh read the label never apply flea medicine made for cats on to dogs unless they will say it's made for cats and dogs obviously but you know since it's been writing there's people that have done it and bad things have happened Regular, regularly inspect your dogs, even if they are taken taken tick preventative. You know, like where I lived, I had a French Britney Spaniel, and I had a French Britney Spaniel, and this guy right here, Kimosabi, American American Leopard Hound. You know, I had to constantly inspect them all the time because they always had ticks. You know, and there were like some freaking ticks. I'd find ticks on them that were the size of a damn lima bean. And that ain't no joke. Uh, the, the quicker you move a tick, the less likely your dog will contract a secondary illness related to tick bites. You know, even, you know, like with my dogs, you know, they constantly got ticks on them all the time, but they still got sick. And I removed them as quick as possible. You know, I called the vet, hey, do you got any kind of thing that I can get my dog? He's sick. He's throwing up. I think that they got Lyme disease. Yeah, bring him in. We'll do blood work. You know, I did blood work. Yep, he got he got Lyme disease. You know, here's the here you go. This is a medication you, you didn't either take, but you know, about like eighty dollars later, you know, well, about one hundred ten dollars later for the vet fee and the and the medications. Walking out uh, for fleas. Look in the same area. Dogs were coat the sparse or thin, basically like right around their genitalia area. Uh, if you own multiple dogs, treat them all at the same time. Uh, dogs, 
being treated, surrounded in wire, it must be treated all, they must all be treated at the same time. Uh, flea infestation, you know, there, there are shampoos that are designed for flea and ticks, but it does not work. And my, my wife put some kind of like fabric softener on our dog it, and just lets it like soak in, you know, don't rinse it, just let it soak in because the ticks hate the smell of it. And once that smell starts to fade away, then they get back on our dog again. But, you know, this is from the American Kennel Club. You know, I almost kept the thing for the CDC, but, you know, I trust the American Kennel Club more than I trust the CDC. So, but I hope you guys found this informative and I will keep the, and I will post a link for the American Kennel Club and the 25 plants that repel ticks. So if you guys are wanting stuff to like plant around your house, you know, uh, let me see. Um, like mint, mint also will keep like the, keep the rodents away from your house. So if you put them around, around the house, you know, it'll keep, mint will keep rodents away too. But like some of the stuff on here will also keep rodents away from your house. So, you know, it's not only just for ticks, you know, but like, you know, and some of it will keep mosquitoes away. But, you know, like, like a uh, lemongrass will keep mosquitoes and, and mice away, but it won't keep the ticks away. So, you know, that would always be a good thing. But I hope you guys have a safe rest of the day. Hope you guys found this informative, you know, and I will see you guys on the next video. Stay safe.